and welcome to Meadow Sage. I'm Sonia. Today I'm doing a book review on a novel. Mm. Hour of the Witch. Let me shut my computer. That is blaring right on it. Oh, that's still there. Maybe that's me. That's me. So, Hour of the Witch is like a really glossy name. Hour of the Witch by Chris, and I'm going to try, Bojalian. Bojalian. He also wrote The Flight Attendant, which this is my first time hearing of him, is this book. Um, I like, this has a lot to do with some of, with the book. Is the simple. So it's a novel. Um, it's a Washington Post best book of the year. Boston, 1662. While Mary Deerfield might have had many suitors in England, in the New World, she is merely the second wife of the cruel and powerful Thomas Deerfield. When Thomas drives a fork into the back of her hand, she's determined to divorce him. But in a world where neighbors constantly watch for signs of the devil, Mary, who harbors secret desires and struggles to tolerate the colony's brazen hypocrisy, soon becomes the object of suspicion. Once tainted objects are discovered in her garden and a boy she has treated with herbs dies, Mary must fight to escape not only her marriage, but also the gallows. A twisting, tightly plotted novel of historical suspense from one of our greatest storytellers, Hour of the Witch is a timely and terrifying story of socially sanctioned brutality and the original American witch hunt. So, yeah, and there was like in the acknowledgments in the back for this novel, when he reached out to someone to talk about this novel, he was contemplating about a Puritan woman's attempt to divorce her husband for what today we call domestic violence, but in the 17th century was called cruelty. So, yeah, and I've got my notes here. So, of course, it's set in the 1660s in Boston, Massachusetts, which... If you know anything about the witch trials and also women struggle to have any kind of authority over their own lives, then you know the period. This period in America was like a real nightmare for women. Women were in, they were dependent on their father or their husband for everything. Widows and or women who would not marry or remarry, they were seen in a way that made them look unruly. And respectable women shouldn't be seen in their company. Also women who would not attend church. So any women who were independent or outspoken were seen as basically wicked or potentially wicked, put it that way. Also other women who maybe were jealous of another woman's life for one reason or another, they were a threat. Any of these instances could get you accused of being a witch, which, and then you, you would have all these wild and absurd accusations thrown at you. So a woman needed to fear her husband and that was called respect for him. And he could punish her for being or doing anything he considered unholy or unchristian. He was punishing you to save your soul. If you told someone you were being beaten or having cruelty bestowed on you, then you had to prove it. And if the husband was not going to admit something, no one else, no one else had witnessed it. So he wasn't going to admit it. So you would be put in your place and made to continue on with your marriage. So Mary is the main character. She's young. She's somewhere around her mid twenties. And she is married to an older man 
who has been married before and he's widowed. He has a daughter from that marriage who is married and has a family of her own. Mary has not become pregnant yet and so is being labeled as barren. And Mary's husband is a pretty heavy drinker, but he hasn't apparently appeared overly drunk to anyone else or so they say. He is very violent towards her, hitting her, shoving her, but no one else seems to witness any of it. So because he has a good business and he goes to church, he is well respected. But Mary gets to a point where she finally makes up her mind to go and seek a divorce. But women usually can't achieve this unless the husband has been witnessed as an adulteress or witnessed the cruelty has been witnessed that she's proclaiming. And if any of that isn't so, then it's usually not granted and the woman has to return to her husband as Mary had to. When she tries other ways to leave or be free, she gets she ends up getting accused of witchcraft and has to endure yet another trial. She endured relentless questioning and having crazy accusations thrown her way, not just by men, but also by women. Even her husband's daughter seemed to be against her, even though uh, she couldn't believe that she had had no knowledge of her father being abusive to her or her mother. This whole story is largely how men in the Christian authority then, they use the Bible and in the name of God, used to oppress women to keep them in line. Um, questions such as, is the woman faithful to her husband? Is she acting as a suitable helpmate to her husband? Does she provoke anger from her husband? The husband never gets questioned if no one has witnessed anything ever. They see no point in questioning him. There's no witnesses to any of this behavior. Why should they question him? As someone who cannot abide oppression, it makes me very angry. It also makes me angry when a community of people claim that they are oppressed when they are actually the oppressors. And I found myself several times having to put this book down and just breathe for a moment <laughs> before picking it back up. I, because I had to know what happened next. I do not believe I would be able to live in this time period. I either would have been executed myself or I would have had to have disappeared in the forest, never to be seen again. Um, and I think I would have done that like being hit a couple of times in the face, being shoved against the fireplace. Um, ridiculed, called names, called dumb, and then having a fork driven into my hand. Yeah, I, I believe I would have pulled that fork out of my hand and plunged it into his face and then just ran off in the woods. I don't, I could not, I can't do that. Um, so I, I think I would rather have struggled in the forest rather than endure that craziness. Mary, had a lot of patience. I just don't have. <laughs> now, I'm not going to give the ending away, but I can say that I never saw that coming. So I do recommend this book. Like, if this period of time, like, if you're interested in this period of time, women's rights, oppression, witchcraft history, then I say it is very hard to put down. Until next video, Blessings of the Dark and Wild.